Okay, let's let's have a look at, at similar triangles. Um, so this was one of the questions that was on that sample paper that that a lot, some hadn't done yet. So so we'll have a look at the theory. So when you look at, at geometry, the chapter that's geometry, it's all about shapes and parallel lines and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, and angles, I suppose. So one of the, the the bigger sections on shapes in that chapter is, is on triangles. Um, and specifically, it, it looks at two uh, type pairs of triangles, okay? You have what's called congruent triangles and you have what's called similar triangles, okay? And it can be easy enough to mix the two up. So you have two triangles as such. Um, you can see I've got two here in, in this diagram. Um, and I'm just using the two triangles just for an image. I'm not reading what's there in the book. But if the triangles are what we call congruent, then all of their angles are the same. Their angles match and the length of their sides matches, which means the two triangles are an exact copy of each other. OK, there's six pieces of information about any triangle. There's three angles. You can see here uh, one at X, one at Y and one at Z. So there's my three angles. And you also have three lengths of sides. You have this side here, X, Y. You have this side here, X, Z. And of course you have Y, Z across the bottom. So six pieces of information about any triangle. So triangles are congruent if, for example, you show that the angle here at X equals the angle at A. If you show that the angle of Y equals the angle of B, if the angle Z equals the angle C, they would be congruent then if X, Y was equal to A, B here, if X, Z was equal to A, C here, and if B, C was equal to Y, Z. So congruent triangles, an exact copy of each other. Um, and we will do questions where you have to show the two triangles are congruent, okay? Now, similar triangles then, what is that, okay? Well, in similar triangles, what you'll see is that the two triangles are a similar shape. Their angles are equal. So in other words, angle A equals angle Z here. Angle B equals angle Y and angle C equals angle Z. That's if these two triangles are similar. That's what you'll end up finding. But their sides won't be the same length. Their sides will be what we call in proportion. Or they'll be the same ratio. OK, so in other words, one triangle is a blown up triangle of the other. It's an enlarged triangle of the other. It's like if you had an image on your screen and like a photo you took and you selected a corner of it and you you pulled the corner up or down to enlarge it or make it small. OK, so that's what in proportion means. When you do a photo from the corner, you pull the length and width of that photo um, with you at the same time. So you keep the dimensions of the photo in proportion. OK, so again, what does that mean? So it, it means if, if I look here from side two to four, can you see that, that one might think that you've added two to that side AB to give you X, Y? OK, you've added two. OK, that doesn't work, though. Adding numbers and subtracting numbers on multiple sides doesn't keep the same proportion. OK, because if you look at me going from this side, AC, which is similar to XZ, can you see if I add on two there, I'd get three and two is five. That's not the case. OK, that side is six. So adding and subtracting the same numbers doesn't work for keeping things in proportion. Instead, what you're doing is you're multiplying or dividing by a number. OK, so in this particular case, when you're going from triangle ABC on the left to triangle um, XYZ on the right, you're multiplying by two. OK, and when you do that, you're keeping things in proportion. OK, so in other words, I could say that triangle XYZ was um, 
twice as big as ABC. Okay, and I know that because their sides are twice as long. They are similar because their angles match. Okay, so that's the theory behind similar triangles. Okay, the symbol, although I don't think I've ever seen it used yet in an exam, is three lines going from top to bottom. Okay, congruent is this way. Similar is this way. Okay, um, I've seen this one used in exams, congruent. I have never seen this one. I've just seen it written out as English. But just in case it did come up, show that the triangle ABC um, is similar to triangle XYZ. And um, that's what it would look like. Okay. So, so what? What kind of questions do they ask? Okay. Um, well, they might ask you to test whether two triangles are similar. Um, so the most common one that's used is that first one there, that first box that I've been drawing on all along. If the lengths of matching sides are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. Okay, if you show that the angles are, are the same, that's okay. But at that stage, you still don't know if the triangles are similar or congruent. So to show that they're similar, you have to show that their sides are not the same, but they are in proportion. So what that means is that if you take the similar sides, so in this one, they're going AB. Okay, do you see it here? I'm reading here, AB over XY. If you, if you divide those two sides, because those two sides match, they're in the same ratio, you'll find that that is exactly equal to AC over XZ, which is also equal to BC over YZ. Okay, and what the sum has done is it's just putting the numbers over you and you've seen that one is one over two. In other words, ABC is half of XYZ or you can say XYZ is twice the size of ABC. So if the lengths of matching sides are in proportion, then the triangles are similar, okay? And you'll find that there's a theorem on your course that is just that. Okay, uh, point two for similar triangles. If two pairs of matching angles are equal, then the triangles are similar. Okay, why two pairs of matching angles? Well, angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if he's 70 and he's 70, and he's 40 and he's 40, that's what, 110. So that leaves 70 degrees for, for X, X and A as well. So if you prove that two pairs of matching angles are equal, then in fact, you've actually proven that all three angles uh, match. Okay. Um, this one isn't as powerful, the one in green, because at that point, you again don't know whether the angles are, are, are similar, just similar, or they're similar and congruent, okay? Because congruent is same angles, but also same sides. Okay, if the lengths of two sides are in proportion and the included angles are equal, then the triangles are similar. So when they talk about an included angle, they're talking about the angle between two sides. OK, so do you see the way 65 degrees there is in between the two arms that they gave you, the two sides? OK, it's what's called the included angle. OK, so if the included angle and the two sides are equal, then the triangles are similar. OK, now that one's good because you can see the sides are different. You're checking that the sides are in proportion and then you're looking at the included angle. And then the fourth one, in a right angle triangle, if the length of the hypotenuse and another side are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. So in a right angle triangle, you just need to show that two of the sides are in proportion and then you can conclude that the triangles are similar. Okay, so this one in orange right up here, this number one is by far, and you'll see it from the exam questions, the one that's examined. Okay, so similar triangles. So 
you get all sorts of questions where you get two triangles and you have to check are they similar. The two triangles might be part drawn together. So the two triangles that are there are ABC and also PQC. Okay, and you would have to show that those two, two triangles are similar. Okay, they might also be drawn like this, where they're two parts of the one shape. And again, you have to prove that they're similar. Okay, I want to draw your attention to question 25 up here. You have two triangles, PQS and PRS. Okay. What you have to be careful of when you're doing similar triangles is that you match the right side to the right side. OK, because and again, if I go back to that first one that we were doing, there's only one pair of sides that matches the other. So at the bottom of that triangle, I can only say, say BC is proportional to YZ. OK, I can't say BC is proportional to XY, for example, because it's not. OK, so how do you figure out which side of one triangle matches up with the. Of which side of the other triangle? OK, how do you know which pair belongs to who? Well, you do that by lining up the triangles so that their angles match. OK, so if I go to that question 26, what I'm saying is you would have to rotate this triangle here on the right so that that angle up here moved down so that it was on the bottom left, okay? So you're almost rotating that triangle PSR. I'll try drawing it here, but it's not too easy, okay? Um, you'd have to rotate it. That angle P is down here, which would put S over here, which would put R over here. OK, so you have to rotate the triangles so that the angles that are equal match up in location with each other. And then you'll be able to see which side is proportional to which. OK, and I'm going to show all that now in a minute with the um, with the lovely little exam question that came up in 2013 where we have to do exactly that. OK, and it's much easier to show you with an example. OK, and of course, you can get wordy questions. We will look at proofs in due course um, and how to show the triangles are congruent and similar. But for now, I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to leave the theory at that and I'm going to swing over to some exam questions and, and we'll do some there.